ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Baugh and welcome back. Uh, now, if you are like me, you probably love horror movies and I think my favorite part of horror movies is kind of imagining what I would do in situations like that. I love, <laughs> I love to watch zombie movies and I know that I'm gonna be prepared when that happens and not if, guys, but one skill that I think really would help everybody get much further in the Zombocalypse is going to be lockpicking. Now it's super prevalent. You've probably seen it in a bunch of movies. You've probably even had somebody come and pick one of your locks at a certain point. Uh, it's kind of the nature of the beast with locks. Once you get them locked and you can't get in, you gotta get in there somehow, right? I wanted to describe a little bit about how that goes. Now there are an infinite amount of resources that are out there for you if you want to. I will link to some down below if you want to get more into lock picking. But let's start with just looking at keys. Now this is the thing that actually gets you into the lock so it's a good place to start. You could tell a lot about how a lock is going to function if you just take a look at the key. So you can see this one has, it's just a very, very common door lock. It's the one for my front door, but you have these different channels that are set at different heights. And basically what that's going to do is once you line the pins up effectively on the top of them, they're going to have a nice clean line across the top, allowing you to twist it and the whole plug will turn, unlocking the lock and moving the thing that was locking it in place, right? So. You can even see, like, if you look at a car key, this is going to have pins on both sides of it. Because of those locks being different, you get a double pin set up there. Um, they can have as many pins as you want. You can get them with five or six pins. You can get safety pins, which are basically going to be shaped differently so that they're harder to pick. You can get all sorts of things, but... Uh, Let's take a look at just basic lock picking. We got our tension wrench and we got our pick here. This is just a standard lock. Now, if you're approaching a lock, the first thing you wanna do, make sure that it's actually locked, that you actually need to do something before you go and you try and pick it, because it very well may be unlocked. Um, and you're gonna notice on this lock here that there is, this one's, placed upside down. I don't know why that would be, but you can sort of see the pins that are in the lock there. Um, you're going to want to kind of, that's where your focus is going to be. You want to provide a very, very light pressure to this. You're going to take the pick that you're actually using. I'm using like a half diamond pick. Um, and you are going to go and then you just keep doing it. Uh, there's also raking, which you can do, which you're just sliding it across the pins. Eventually it will happen, guys, if you're just doing it enough times. Um, but you just want to keep going until you can actually turn that lock all the way over. Uh, some key points to keep in mind before you ever start picking anything is that putting picks into a lock will constitute breaking and entering. So you don't want to do it if you don't own the lock. and it can also break the lock. It, enough wear on those pins will allow, uh, will keep them from uh, locking into place and getting that proper shear line and that can make it a lot more easy to pick later. So don't do it on a lock that you um, care about or that you use all the time. That's just not smart, you know, but if it's the Zombocalypse and, you know, you got a little bit of time, you can go and you can pick a lock and it'll be okay. Now I do as little picking as I possibly can because most times you can just bypass a, a lock. Uh, for instance, if you have, I mean, this is kind of the most extreme way of doing it, but if you put some sort of jack in between the door handle and you just pop it to where that separates enough, you can get that door open. If you take a drill and you drill straight through the pins, that's going to destroy all the pins, allowing the plug to move freely, which is effectively the same as picking it and you'll be able to lock it later. Obviously that's a little more destructive, both of those means are. Um, a lot of people can get into a place with a credit card. That's another form of bypass picking. You're just taking the locking mechanism part of it and you are bypassing the whole pin and tumbler setup 
entirely. Or if you have a, a padlock, for instance, that you want to get into, you can quite easily cut open a Coke can and uh, make a shim out of it and then just pop that lock with that. So there are a number of avenues to do it besides picking. You want to decide if picking is the appropriate means for you. If it's something that you have enough time for or something that you, I guess, didn't want somebody to find out about after the fact you could lock pick. Uh, those sorts of things. You're going to look at the situations that are going to be appropriate for that. You're going to need a lockpick set. I have a South Ord set. Uh, it's got about 24 pieces. I have quite a few of these things in here. I don't use hardly any of them. I have my go-to uh, picks. I like the half diamond pick and the tension wrench you can get. Um, I've also heard it torsion wrench. But basically, you are putting the tension wrench into the lock at the bottom of the keyhole. This is going to be the thing that actually allows you to turn it. And then you take the pick and you're going to set each one of the pins on top of that with these. Now you can get a bunch of different styles of them. There are an infinite amount of picks. I mean, I have just in this set alone, I had 24, you know, but... You don't necessarily need it. You can do it with a bobby pin, you can do it with a paper clip, uh, but you're effectively just mimicking the same style as these. Uh, when you use a bobby pin, you're going to bend the edge so that you have a little something to pick it with, and then you're going to use some sort of torsion wrench that can be a screwdriver if you want, as long as you are actually picking a lock. Um, but there are a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Like I said, I will link to some other videos that you can check out down below. So hopefully this has helped, but that's all I had for you guys tonight. It was a pleasure as always, and you guys have a wonderful evening.